In the first chapter of Mark, there is a very important word. And the word is immediately. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens open. The spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. And immediately they cast down their nets and followed him. And immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee. And immediately on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught. And immediately he left the synagogue. And immediately they told him of her. Eight times the word immediate. Must be an important word to Mark, right? Now, for me, this gives me a sense of urgency. That there's something urgent that's happening here that we have to pay attention to. We are all urgent people. We're urgent in building and maintaining our temporal lives here, for the most part, in America. Our goal is independence, to be without need. Neediness is weakness. It's dependency. It is failure. As rich Americans, neediness is our deepest fear. We fear it more than sin and death. Yes, even more than hell itself. Matter of fact, death and hell can wait. I just have to get my degree, my promotion, my dream house, or I have to fix up our kitchen. I mean, you know, we have to have, that's what's immediate to us, ASAP. But our urgency for temporal things drowns out our true needs, which are profoundly spiritual. It's no longer polite to even talk about ultimate issues anymore. When's the last time you sat down with somebody and talked to them about death? Like, you know, we're going to die and actually have a conversation on mortality. When's the last time we talked about the realities of the next life, of heaven and hell, and, and, and how do I know where I'm going? This is not polite to talk about things like this. Or how about the reading in Job? Wasn't that a great downer this morning? <laughs> He's basically saying that life is brutal. And it is brutal in a lot of ways if we step back and just watch it for what it is. How can any of us, including myself, hear the gospel? Really hear it in this climate? Well, as in all things, we just need to consecrate on Jesus Jesus in this chapter emerges out of 40 days in the wilderness. And the first thing he does is he preaches the gospel. And do you know what the gospel is? It's a word that means good news, but it goes back into the Old Testament. And it's got to do with holy war. You see, when an enemy army was marching through um, people in town, the, the the fathers and the sons would go out and join an army and they would, they, would ha- they would have to put their lives on the line. And everybody in the town, can you imagine it being a mother knowing that you could, you, she could lose her husband, she could lose her sons, and then the enemy would come by and they could kill them or take them off a slave. She could be in a harem of someone who killed her own family. And so you can imagine how urgent it must be standing on the parapet, so to speak, of the city and waiting, waiting, waiting. What's my life going to be like? And a runner comes. And the runner, everybody knows that the runner's got the news. And he comes back and he says, it's good news. Can you imagine? Can you put yourself in that person's place? Can you imagine the urgency That is what the gospel is. We are in a desperate situation. We have deep needs. 
They're beyond telling. Jesus is coming in and giving us the good news. He calls the disciples. What do they do? They immediately drop temporal things. Immediately, the the demonic world is disturbed. Jesus is casting out demons. And in today's reading, he's healing in his, uh, Peter's mother-in-law house, okay? It is late afternoon. Um, uh, uh, the whole town is coming at the door. Uh, 100, 1,500 people there, about the size of this church, we all got together, right? At the door. And, and it's, they know their needs. They know their physical needs and their spiritual needs. They're coming to Jesus, and he's dealing with them. And then afterwards, Jesus says, we need to go out and preach the gospel. In the epistle reading, what did St. Paul say? A few verses before our reading, uh, he says, woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. And um, he says, you know, I'm at, I'll be anything to everybody just so I can save some, so I can preach the gospel. You know, um, I, it's hard for us to understand this urgency, and um, it's hard for me. So I, I actually took my son to Kenya about four or five years ago so I can just get out of my bubble and see um, what life is really like. And there's a, a, a city there called Machakos, and um, there's a flank of a mountain. Okay, it's, this went a long way up, and it's really high, and then a Sunday said, son, we're going to go up on top of that mountain. So we were climbing up this, this mountain on Sunday, and we're passing by shacks, and there's some, um, and each shack has their vegetable garden. They live off their, 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 their garden, you know? And as they're going up, everywhere scattered. I couldn't see them. We're little churches. They, and, and do you know what these Africans were doing? These Kenyans? All day long, without stop, they were singing. You could, the, whole, the whole hillside was, was singing. They were singing gospel songs, you know? <laughs> Why? Because they are needy people. They needed each other to survive, and they needed God. And they know the joy of being redeemed, the joy of being saved from something very terrible. And it is full of joy. Full of joy. Yeah, well, anyways. What are we supposed to do? Well, we aren't to sell everything and go to Kenya, okay? (laughs) But what can we do? What can we do? We can search our hearts. Ask yourself this question, what are we most urgent about? The temporal or the eternal? Can I, Lord, see my spiritual poverty? Help me to see that I need you to get to heaven. I do. I need you, 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 and you. And you need me. We need each other. We are needy people. And we need God. Pray for me because I'm preaching a sermon to myself. What am I most urgent about? 